it feels like Konami is giving more and more legendary duelist set, and I am not the one to complain. The set always has some really interesting cards from some of our favorite characters. This time around, legendary duelist Sister Rose has some amazing cards from Akiza, Mai, and other female characters alike. But is legendary duelist Sisters Rose really worth buying? I'm the Cali Effect, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, then go and destroy that subscribe button. But more importantly, go ahead and that notification bell, because, well, we just too strong. Also, want to give a special thanks to every single one of my Patreons. Without you guys, videos like this would not be possible. Also, a mad shout out to our newest Patreon, Alfredo Cervera. Welcome to the clan. Make sure you add yourself to that discord as well as message me or just so we can get you into the top dog section So you can take advantage of all your rewards without further ado. I present to you. How good is legendary duelist sisters rose? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be splitting this video up into five different sections We're gonna start off with the harpy support Move to the Black Rose support, then the Train support, the Lunar Light support, and then finishing off with the Cyber Angel support. There's also going to be some times that I'm not really looking at the camera, but that's because I'm reading off the card. I want to be able to give you guys the correct information. Starting off with the Harpy support, we're going to start off by talking about Harpy Perfumer or Performer. Per per perfumer perform whatever it wants to be it is a level four wicked beast monster with wit attribute and 1400 attack its effect reads this card becomes harpy lady while it's on a field or graveyard similar to almost every harpy lady card in Yu-Gi-Oh! just about right now if this card is normal summon or special summon you can add one spell or trap card that specifically lists harpy lady sisters in that card text from your deck to your hand if you control a level five or higher harpy monster at activation you can add to up to two cards with different names Names instead you can only use this effect of harpy perfumer once per turn now this card is really interesting i think that it's at least a solid two of inside of the deck and it kind of forces you or makes you want to play harpy lady sisters or cards that involve harpy lady sisters very fortunate for us elegant egotist is a card that already involves harpy lady sisters that the harpy strategy already plays so it's pretty good that that comes in, into mind but off the top of my head i can't think of any great cards that involve harpy lady sisters in its card text on to the next card we're going to talk about harpy's feather rest now this card is insanely good if you ask me it says target three harpy lady and or harpy lady sister monsters in your graveyard return them into your deck and then draw one card if you controlled a level five or higher harpy monster at activation you can draw two cards instead you cannot spell summon for the rest of the turn except for wind monsters you can only activate one harpy's feather rest once per turn now if you guys are starting to realize the harpy support is going to be more lenient or more dedicated to the harpy monsters that like to be level five or higher namely harpy lady sisters but all also harpy's pet dragon and now seeing that harpy's pet dragon is a level seven monster harpy channeler becomes a level seven monster this card may restrict you to only being able to summon wind monsters but number 42 galaxy tomahawk is a wind monster itself so i can already see some spicy plays with this card and a harpy's pet dragon and the most important thing about this card is that it is a pot of avarice i really do like it i think it's a solid two of inside of a deck i can't really see either of these cards when the dust settles or when the price settles being more than $10, um, because I don't think that Harpies is an extremely competitive deck, but they look really fun. You probably could even surprise a regional level event. I would be pretty excited to make a deck profile and live duel on them. Uh, another one of the cards for the Harpy support is a alluring, what, what, a, alluring Mirror Spirit. Now, what Alluring Mirror Spirit does it's a spell card, continuous spell card. When your Harpy Lady or Harpy Lady Sisters is destroyed by battle, you can spell someone with Harpy Monster with a different original name from your deck. I am not a fan of that effect. It's way too slow, but it does include Harpy Lady Sisters in its text, meaning that it is searchable by Perfumer. Um, if this card in its owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect or your Harpy's card effect, you can target one Harpy Monster in your graveyard special summon it. You can only use each effect of a luring mirror spirit once per turn. Now, I did like the second effect of it being destroyed. Not only because it says if it's destroyed by an opponent's card effect, but you can destroy it yourself to gain its free special summon ability. This deck might be a low-key swarm deck since you have Perfumer to search Elegant Egotist, and you can also search this and destroy it with your Harpy's Hunting Ground, 
triggering its ability to summon a harpy monster to your side of the field i actually kind of like it but i don't think that it's a card that you might want to max out in multiple copies mainly seeing that it's really a dead card if you have it in your hand and no way to abuse its second ability next is harpy oracle uh, this is probably one of the best looking harpy monsters i think it looks better than harpy perfumer but mm, maybe it's personal preference 1300 attack level 4 wind winged beast monster and its effect reads this card's name obviously becomes harpy lady while it's on the field or graveyard and you can only use the following effects of harpy oracle once per turn its first effect is if you control a level 5 or higher harpy monster you can special summon this card from your hand free monsters i love free monsters if this card is normal summon or spell summon, you can add one spell or trap card that specifically lists Harpy Lady Sisters and its text from your graveyard to your hand during the end phase of this turn. Now, I am not a hundred percent hype for that second ability, even though it does provide a lot of recursion inside of this deck, allowing you to add Elegant Egotist, um, Alluring Mirror Spirit, or Harpy's Feather Rest. I am excited about that first effect. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I am excited about that first effect, allowing you to summon this monster to your side of the field when you control a Harpy's baby pet or a Harpy Lady Sisters. Now, maybe if we got a new version of Harpy Lady Sisters, I think that it would be a lot more playable because as of right now, Sisters themselves, they just don't do anything. It's a level six Harpy monster. It's clunky. I don't think that that would be the main playability, but since it does work with Harpy's Pet Dragon, and Harpy's Pet Dragon gives you access to Tomahawk, I think that that might be the way to go for Harpies. The last new support of the Harpy set, for, or from the Harpies in the Duelist of Roses set, is a trap card called <coughs> Harpy Lady Elegance. You guys have to excuse me, I'm still a little sick. It says, shuffle one Harpy Lady Sisters you control into the deck. This spells summon one harpy monster with a different original name from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Wow. You cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except wind monsters. If this guard's owner control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect or your harpy's card, add one harpy monster from your deck to your hand. Whoa. This card is just useful on so many fonts. Like, I'm almost ready to go buy a Harpy Lady Sisters by myself and just play that one copy just so I can abuse this card's first effect, but it's also really good for its second effect. That is just insane. I like the way that the Harpy support is going. Uh, a lot of times we get support for an older strategy and it kind of says, no, go this way. We're not doing that anymore. It seems that the new Harpy support is continuant with the support that we had before. And it actually just builds onto the strategy and lets, allows you to play other Harpy cards that were once non-viable, cough, cough, Harpy Lady Sisters. I don't think that Harpies will be a terribly expensive uh, archetype inside of this set. But I do think that they'll be a really fun deck to play. And again, I can't wait to play them myself for you guys. Next, we're going to be talking about those Rose Dragon monsters used by the famous Akiza, which for the people that live in America, Erica Schroeder played both my Valentine and Akiza. But let's talk about those monsters. Starting off with Red Rose Dragon, it is a level three dragon tuner monster with a thousand attack and 1800 defense. It is a dark monster and its effect reads, if this card is sent to the graveyard as a synchro material, you can spell summon one Rose Dragon from your hand or deck, except Red Rose Dragon. Then, if it was sent for a synchro summon of Black Rose Dragon or a plant synchro monster, you can add one Frozen Rose or one Blooming of the Darkest Rose from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Red Rose Dragon once per turn. I love this card. I think that is one of the best cards that the Rose Dragon monsters have. Why? Because not only does it get you a free monster, to your side of the field it also allows you to search a card if you are playing the red or the rose dragon deck i think that is one of the better cards and i am not sure what rarity it is but if it's an ultra rare again i really don't see this deck being really competitive it might be used for fun locals but maybe five dollars max unfortunately next card is actually a card that i think has some applications outside of the rose dragon series maiden rose my apologies it is called garden rose maiden 
it is it requires a tuner and a non-tuner monster and it's also a level five it says if this card is spell summoned you can add one black garden from your deck or graveyard to your hand so for those black garden reliant decks there's a crusadia deck that loves black garden as well as some other black garden decks like chain beat that might take advantage of this card it also says you can banish this card from your graveyard to target one rose dragon monster or one dragon synchro monster in your graveyard special summon it you can only use each effect of garden rose maiden once per turn i think this card will have so many applications outside of just the black rose series it's definitely a card you should pick up fortunately looking at it right now it's not a really good card so you might want to pick it up i love that it has 1600 attack and you can spell summon it off of black guard and still gain its effects it is awesome if you ask me the next card for the Rose series is Frozen Rose, the card that Red Rose Dragon searches. This, in my opinion, is another one of those cards that can be applicable to other decks, and it's just really powerful when you look at it. It says, send one face-up monster you control to the graveyard. Apply the following effect, depending on the type of monster. If you send the plant during the end phase, draw two cards, then discard one card. That effect is okay. I think that if you are sending a plant monster like Dandelion to the graveyard, then you'll be able to get tokens and draw two cards and discard at the end phase, and that would be perfect. But if you're just sending any plant monster, uh, I don't like that. The next effect is if you send a non-plant monster to the graveyard, you can add one level four or lower plant monster from your deck to your hand. You can only activate one frozen rose once per turn. It is a quick play spell card, meaning that you can use it almost any given time during either player's turn and it allows you to search your plant monsters your level four lower plant monsters i know one that comes to mind for me is lone fire blossoms for free i think that this card is really really good and it's a card that everybody should start picking up i can see it at its hype price being that when it actually lone fire blossom comes into the format this could be a 20 plus dollar card because it comes from such an obscure set the next card we're going to be talking about is dark rose fairy this card's effect states, or I'm sorry, it's a 800 attack, 1000 defense, fairy dark monster that's level 2. It says if a tuner monster is special summon except during the damage step, you can spell summon this card from your hand. If this card is in your graveyard, you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard to place this card on the top or the bottom of your deck. I'm not 100% sure why this card was made, but it definitely was made with some intentions. Maybe I have to do a little bit more research inside of the Rose archetype to see where it comes off because it seems like one of those cards that's like, oh, it's mediocre. But once you start playing it inside its specific strategy, it might be a little better than what you initially think. The last card for the Rose archetype that is new from the Duelist of Rose set is Blooming of the Darkest Rose, and it is a trap card that affects states. Spell summon one Rose token, plant, dark, level two, 800 attack, 800 defense, in defense position to either field, up to the combined number of cards in the field zones in field spells in the graveyard. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target one Black Rose Dragon or one Plant Monster in your monster zone, banish it. And if you do, place this card to the bottom of your deck. During your next standby phase, return the banished monster to the field. You can only use the effect of Blooming of the Darkest Rose once per turn. I'm not a huge fan of this. I'm just not. I'm sorry. I, I don't really see an application for it right now. It does provide free monsters to your side of the field, which when I was reading the entire archetype, I was like, where are you going to get all these monsters from to start triggering effects? So I think it's good in that as asset, but it doesn't seem like a great card overall that is it for the rose dragon archetype let's get to the next one though all right ladies and gentlemen now we are on to what i think is what everyone is looking for this is all the hype around this set it is the train archetype that debuts or doesn't necessarily debut we've had train cards throughout the existence of Yu-Gi-Oh, but get some serious support that makes it possibly a viable deck starting off with super dreadnought rail cannon juggernaut i'm not gonna say that card's last name or last part i don't know how to say it it is a rank 11 4k 4k monster that requires three level 11 monsters and in effect reads once per turn, you can exceed summon Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Juggernaut by using one rank 10 monster you control as material. Transfer materials for this card. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card and it gains 2,000 attack and defense. What are you doing? I don't want a 6k, 6k monster on the field. Also, other monsters you control cannot attack for the rest of the turn. This card can make a number of attacks on monsters during each battle phase equal to its number of materials. So... The Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Juggernaut is a powerful card. I can see everybody playing one to two in their extra decks, and I don't see it as being 
that amazing card that will just be the money card or highly sought after card but i do see it as one of those cards that everybody wants because it not only does it look cool making a 6k monster for two level 10s is free especially since the train archetype can do that relatively easy next we're going to talk about super express bullet train it is a level 10 monster with 3000 attack and it says cannot declare an attack unless you send two other cards you control to the graveyard you can only use the following aspect effects of super express bullet train once per turn if all monsters you control are earth monsters you can spell summon this card from your hand during the end phase, if this card is in your graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can target one machine monster in your graveyard except for Super Express Bullet Train add it to your hand. This card is the go-getter card for the archetype. It is a free 3000 level 10 monster to your side of the field that can recur resources for you as well. I think that this will be the card to get. I can see it being anywhere between $15 to $20 depending on how competitive the trains are. But the way that they're looking, trains are looking better and better, and they do like the best art type in the set at the very least so far. Flying Pegasus Railroad Stampede. God, they have some names. This is a level 4 1800 attack machine monster, and its effect reads, if this card is normal summon or spell summon, you can target one earth machine monster in your graveyard. Spell summon in the defense position, but negate its effects. You can target one other face-up. Please, please change the level. Please change the level. You can target one other face-up monster you control. The levels of both that monster and this card becomes the same as that current one of them. You cannot declare an attack this turn. You activate this effect except with XC monsters. You can only use the effect of Flying Pegasus Railroad Stampede once per turn. This guy is also important for the train concept because not only is it a level four monster that can summon other monsters to your side of the field, it can make himself level 10. This deck is really good or it looks really good on paper. The last card for the train archetype is Barrage Blast. Once per turn, you can detach any number of materials from machine XE monsters you control, then target that many cards on the field, destroy them. If a machine XE monster you, can, you control is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card. The target one XE monster in your graveyard. Inflict damage to your opponent equal to this level, equal to the rank of the banished monster times 200. This isn't a terrible card. I don't think I would play it, but the other three cards definitely make up for this mediocre card, if you ask me. Trains can be competitive if you ask me. They already had some pretty good support, just waiting on some other cards to help them along the way. And these new cards give them advantage. It gives them advantage for days. I really think that this will be a powerful deck and at the very least, a very fun deck to play. And already off the bat, if you ask me, it's gonna go these trains, then it's gonna go those harpies right now. Let's see what the next cards or next set of cards have to offer for us. The next archetype we are going to be talking about are those Cyber Angels, and we're going to kick start it off with their quick play spell card named Magnificent Machine Angel. It says tribute one Cyber Angel ritual monster from your hand or field, then target one light fairy monster you control. It gains 200 attack and defense times the level of the tributed monster. Also, if it battles a special monster from the extra deck, negate its effects of that opponent monsters during the battle phase. These changes last to the end of the turn. You can only activate one Magnificent machine angel once per turn now i am not a machine angel or cyber angel enthusiast but if i can remember correctly the cyber angel monsters gain abilities off being tributed and that would be the main thing that you want to do with this deck being able to tribute those cyber angel monsters and gain their effects as well as give a nice boost to one of your cyber angel or one of your light fairy monsters on the field Next is, well, it looks like soon enough I'm going to have to be a Cyber Angel enthusiast because I'm going to have to learn a deck and possibly do a deck profile on it. Next is Mer Merciful Machine Angel, and this isn't a ritual spell card, so it caught me off by surprise. It's a normal spell card that says, Tribute one Cyber Angel ritual monster from your hand or field. Draw two cards. Then place one card in your hands at the bottom of your deck. For the rest of the turn after this card resolves, you cannot spell summon monsters except ritual monsters. You can only activate Merciful Machine Angel once per turn. I love this card because it allows you to tribute a Cyber Angel monster, giving you the ability to activate their effects, and then draw two cards. And then on top of that, you can put a dead card to the bottom of your deck. Maybe some cards you don't want to see if you play like a Brilliant Engine or something. I'm not 100% sure how you play this deck. But I'm loving how the deck works. It's getting me excited and wanting to play the deck. And um, I'm looking forward to it because I do have high rarity Cyber Angel cards. Next is, oh, uh, whoa, Incarcerated Machine Angel Ritual. And just to go back 
um, a little bit. I'm not 100% sure of the rarity of these cards inside of the set because I'm looking at it on Wikipedia. It doesn't have the rarity of this set. So hypothetically, let's just say if they were all ultra rares, this card won't be more than $5. The first card that I talked about, the Magnificent Machine Angel, Merciful Machine Angel won't be more than $5. Let's see what Incars or Incarnated Machine Angel does. It's a continuous spell card. Your Cyber Angel Ritual Monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. When your opponent, when you take battle damage or, or effect damage by an opponent's monster, you can tribute one Cyber Angel Monster from your hand or field. Spell some one Cyber Angel Ritual Monster from your hand. This is treated as a ritual summon. You can only use the effect of Machine Angel, uh, the OCG name is Manifestation, but it's Incarnated Machine Angel once per turn. I'm not a fan of this card. I don't think it's good because it requires the opponent's interaction and it, it forces you to tribute a monster, which again, isn't bad, but it, you have to have a monster to summon off of it too. So it's like, uh, I, I think that all of the support is given to those, one of those cards that is just like, uh, I'm not sure. And this is definitely one of them. Let's hope that Cyber Egg Angel doesn't disappoint. If this card is summoned, you can add one Machine Angel spell or Ritual Sanctuary from your deck to your hand. That definitely did not disappoint, ladies and gentlemen. And it does kind of work well with, you know, any of your cards that you need. Uh, next and lastly is, well, I mean, I'm sorry. This card won't be more than five bucks either, if you ask me. Um, and then lastly is Cyber Angel Izana. Okay, it is a ritual spell card that is level 8 with 2500 attack, 26 defense. You can ritual summon this card with Machine Angel Ritual. If this card is ritual summoned, you can make your opponent send one spell or trap their art they control to the graveyard. When this attacking card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can activate this effect. This card can make it a second attack on an opponent's monster in a row. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a Cyber Angel Ritual Monster, you can shuffle one Ritual Monster from your graveyard to your deck, and if you do, destroy one card your opponent controls. It's not necessarily a terribly great card, but it has really good power. It's a mini Blacklister Soldier. It's easy to summon knowing the Cyber Angels, and I don't think it's a terrible card. It might be, maybe its level or applications might be a little bit more useful inside of the Cyber Angel deck, but from the outside looking in, it looks like a pretty decent card that you would run a one of. I don't see this card being more than $5. I am definitely underrating the Cyber Angel archetype for the people that are Cyber Angel enthusiasts. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so the last support we are going to talk about are those Luna Light Monsters. Hopefully they don't disappoint like the other archetypes or the other archetypes haven't disappointed, but you guys get the point. Luna Light Yellow Martin is a level four beast warrior monster. Would I like to add that Fire Formation Tanky is probably one of the better cards to get right now just because? If this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can target one Luna Light card you control, except Luna Light Yellow Martin. Return that card to the hand, and if you do, special summon this card in defense position, but banish it when it leaves the field. If this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can add one Luna Light Spell or Trap card from your deck to your hand. You can only use Martin once Port turn. I really like Martin, mainly because the show really made me mad, but this card definitely is not the black guy. Um, awkward. First of all, I, I do know a little bit about Luna Light Monsters. They do have a pendulum monster that goes into the scale, so you can bounce that card to bring this to your side of the field, and then use it for a fusion material, which will allow you to get other Luna Light cards. I do think that this card is great for the strategy. Next is Luna Light Serenade Dance. It is a trap card, continuous trap card. And it says when a fusion monster is special summoned to your side of the field, you can target that monster, special summon Luna Light Token, Dark Warrior, four Dark Warrior level four, 2000 attack, 2000 fence, to your opponent's field. And the target monster gains 500 attack for each monster your opponent controls. You can banish this card from your graveyard, send one card from your hand to the graveyard, and special summon Luna Light Monster from your deck. You can only use the effect of Luna Light Serenade, Serenade Dance once per turn. Now, I thought that this card was pretty decent. As far as effect, I was like, ah, it's not bad. It doesn't really noteworthy. But then you read its second effect, you're like, whoa, 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 I can get anything? I think it's a pretty good card. Maybe cards like Foolish Burial Goods will find its way into the Luna Light strategy to send this card from the deck to the graveyard. But if you hard draw it, it's not that bad of a card either. Next is Luna Light Saber Dancer, and this card is wild. Whoa. <laughs> oh, she's pretty catty, isn't she? She is a level nine Beast Warrior fusion effect monster that requires three level three Luna Light monsters, and it says must be fusion summoned. Your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. Gain 200 attack for each Beast Warrior monster that is banished and in the graveyards. 
during your main phase, except the turn this card, this, this card was sent to the graveyard. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one future monster you control. It gains 3,000 attack until the end of the turn. You can only use Luna Lightsaber Dancer once per turn. I think that this is a pretty solid card, if you ask me. It's not over the top, but it does make its point known. It can't be targeted by your opponent's card effect. It's 3,000 attack. It gains more attack, but even importantly, it can add attack to Luna Lights. If I can remember the Luna Lights, they were really good at OTKing, and this card definitely does give it an edge to do so. Next is Luna Light Fusion. It says Fusion. Fusion number one, Luna Light Fusion monster using monsters from your hand or filled as fusion material. If your opponent controls a monster that was special from the extra deck, you can also use one Luna Light monster from your deck or extra deck as fusion material. So it's a Shadow Fusion. It's literally Shadow Fusions for Luna Lights. That's insane. I like it. I think it's a really good card. It allows you to not only search it because it has fusion in its name, but it also acts as a Shadow Fusion. Your opponent controls a monster for on their side of the field spell summon from the extra deck. I think that that actually is probably the best card so far. Lastly is Luna Light Emerald Bird, the level four beast warrior monster that is dark, 1200 attack. Um, she's a bird, but she's a beast warrior. We're not gonna talk about this. If this card is normal summon or spell summon, you can send one Luna Light card from your hand to the graveyard. And if you do, draw one card. <laughs> so now you can run the trap card. Now you can just summon this and discard the trap card, awesome. If this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target one of your level four Luna Light monsters that was banished or in the graveyard, except Luna Light, plus someone in the defense position, but its effects are negated. You can only use the effect, each effect of Luna Light Emerald Bird once per turn. This card is amazing. And if you guys ask me, Luna Lights are not that bad. They probably receive the most consistently good support out of all of the other archetypes. Not to say that those other archetypes are bad either. I think if I were to order them, it would be chain trains, obviously, is number one. Maybe Harpies or Luna Lights is two and three. Number five would have to go Black Rose, which means number four is the other deck that I just can't think of. Oh, Cyber Angels. Cyber Angels. I do think that Black Roses will need a lot more support. And the Cyber Angels do look spicy, but I just can't put it above those Harpies or Luna Lights. I want to know what you guys think down below in the comment section. What do you think about this set? And even more importantly, which ones would you like to see in a live game or possible deck profile? Thank you guys so much. Oh, before I even get to that, the set is only $46. Now, keep in mind, when you buy the set and you open packs, you are not guaranteed a holo card per set. I would definitely say buy singles, but it's very tempting to buy a really cheap set and be able to pull everything you need. But thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If I were to give this set a rating, it is a 6 out of 10. It's not competitive, but it's really fun. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.